<laughs> Via telephone, the mayor of the city of Huntington, Steve Williams. Steve, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Rob. Thanks for the invitation. I've been looking forward to this. Absolutely. I, I appreciate you doing that. Kevin Knowles speaks highly of you, by the way. Kevin and I have worked well together for the last 10 years. Um, he was on city council when we first met, and then as he became mayor, uh, we've been very active with one another at, at the West Virginia Municipal League, and I nominated him to become one of the officers, and as a result, he was uh, a couple of years ago president of the state Municipal League. Yes, and, he was. Uh, yeah. He's just a great guy to work with, and uh, uh, having high regard for him, but certainly, certainly he's highly, highly, highly respected uh, by other municipal officials uh, throughout the state. Steve, about a month ago, we were having a discussion on this program about prominent Democrats who might run for governor. Certainly the Republican field is filled with uh, names that are recognizable to at least those of us uh, in this business, and I'm sure to many others as well. On the Democratic side, your name came up as someone who might have interest and was prominent enough that uh, some name recognition would be associated with you as well. Stephen, I know I understand that there was a, a recent gathering for Juneteenth where you made mention of the fact that you're giving it strong consideration. Given a very strong consideration, uh, uh, I heard Asa Hutchison, the former governor of Arkansas, say on one of the Sunday morning shows earlier in the year, and I just thought the way he, they asked him if he intended to run for president, and his response was, and uh, I would imagine both of the delegates, the present delegate Height and former delegate Doyle, understands how you start to hear how others say something, go, mm, I'm going to hold on to that one. Asa Hutchinson at the time said, uh, uh, it's an item of discussion that is worth uh, putting on the table. And that's what I've been saying. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and frankly, we have been talking about it. My wife and I have talked about it extensively, my family, and I've been going around the state having some conversations. Everything it points towards me running. Uh, reality is, is that I'm trying to figure out, all right, when is the right time to actually go in and file the papers? And it's never, ever, ever, ever uh, definite until you file the papers. So that's where this past weekend we had a Juneteenth celebration, and I was asked to talk about a few things, and I said, some of you are asking whether or not I'm going to going to run for governor. I'm seriously thinking about it. I'm inclined to, but uh, uh, stay tuned. We'll be making a decision as to when we will actually file papers. And I expect uh, that I'll file papers sometime in either July or August. Ben Salango, I know, is uh, was a recent guest of yours, and uh, I know that he's thinking about it. I have a great deal of respect for, for the commissioner. He and I have had a few conversations about this, and uh, the one promise that we made to one another is that uh, we're going to stay in touch. And frankly, I think, given the state of uh, party politics in, in West Virginia, it'd be best if the Democratic, Democratic nominee didn't have a field uh, to, to run through uh, in order to be able to save all the resources they could to be able to come up in a general election, but uh, we'll we'll see uh, how that how that turns out. Uh, Steve, I think you're absolutely right about that, uh, and it's interesting uh, when um, uh, 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 when Ben Salango was on. I was the next guest after Ben Salango last Friday, uh, and Bill Stubblefield, uh, who is very often a co-host on this show. And I were talking, and he said, oh, no, no, it's much better if you have a primary because then both of them get much more name recognition. And when the primary is over, then, you know, they've got, they're have got they better off to go into November. And I said, no, Bill, they're not because they will have spent all their money trying to beat each other. And, and whoever is going to run needs to, to husband all the money that they can for the general election. So, yeah, I agree with you. You know, John. Uh, realistically, as as I look at it, I can make I can argue either side. Uh, the reality is, is it helps uh, to have iron sharpening iron. 
that you have somebody to go up against and be able to to uh, uh, to, to sharpen your message and and uh, and have a little bit of a exercising your 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 muscles so to speak in in your campaign uh, but the reality is is that whoever is going to run on the other side they're going to have a boatload of money uh, available to them and uh, uh, my, what I would like to be able to do is uh, to make sure that I hoard everything possible um, but the reality is is that uh, whoever comes out of the uh, Republican side, they're going to be a formidable candidate. I have worked with every one of the Republican uh, candidates, um, the ones that hold public office and the ones that are uh, business people. I've worked with all of them, have a great deal of respect for, for all of them, and uh, whoever is – is chosen will be formidable and uh, need to be on my A game. Um, as, I, as I look at it, and I said this uh, to Metro News uh, uh, a month or so ago, this, no matter how you cut it, this is going to be an uphill climb, um, but it's a climb worth taking. Because uh, the reality is, is that uh, the future of our state, making sure that we're able to reverse the trend of population loss and reverse the trend of our children moving away to find economic opportunity, reversing uh, the, the trend that West Virginia seemingly runs last. We've made some, we have really made some advances in, in recent years. Uh, certainly the, the, uh, the manufacturing uh, announcements that, that are being made, all of that works in, in our favor, and and I think uh, where we find ourselves is that um, we're starting to see some success. But the reality is, we're still we're still mid pack among the states. We're not in the uh, uh, forty or lower. We're not in we're not in number fifty anymore. But son of a gun, have any of us ever in our professional lives ever expected? Well. We're we're in the top half. That just doesn't work. We need to be in the top five, in the top ten percent. Top ten percent is in the top five of the, of the states in in the nation. And uh, the reality is is that what we have in in West Virginia is that we have resources and we have individuals here who can compete with anybody across the world, and we need to act as though. That, that we have, and frankly, that's what I what I was facing when I first became mayor of Huntington uh, 11 years ago. Uh, 12, well, yeah, 11 years ago, um, Huntington didn't believe in itself. Everybody was Huntington was the butt end of every joke, was on the tail end of everything that was being done. When ever, the only thing the Huntington was being mentioned for early on was. If you want to know how not to do it, Huntington was the example. <laughs> now we are used as the example of as, as to how to be able to do to do things, and I think uh, we're headed in that direction in West Virginia. But uh, we still we still have a way. We certainly still have a way to go. Mike Heitz. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Um, Hi, delegate. How are you? Fabulous. So uh, when I look at the at the upcoming governor's race and I look on the Republican side, I, I see an an exceptional field of candidates, uh, probably more oh, yeah. exceptional than I have seen um, on one side in a long time. And then I, I look at at the other side, if you get into the race um, and I look at your resume and I think to myself, here's probably the most qualified individual that would be in this race i look at all the, the republican candidates and their qualifications and they really don't measure up to your qualifications the the the, the uh those those positions that you've held throughout your life that would uh benefit us as a governor um now having said that it, it's you can't overlook the fact that we are a red state so oh, sure. even with all the qualifications that you have how do you overcome um, the fact that we are such a red state um, to win a, a an election for the, for the governorship? Um, 
Thank you. Thank you so much for your assessment of my abilities. Uh, <laughs> First I, thing I, I, I do and, is and, hire and, height on your campaign stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to, we're going to tape this. <laughs> yeah, because height might know where a few of those bodies are buried on, on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are bodies on my side, too. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the reality is, John, uh, can, you know, there's there's a point after a while you have lived for a while, uh, life has a way of catching up. <laughs> That's <with>. right. <laughs> uh, um, there's, Mike, there's absolutely uh, no question that, uh, as I was saying, it's going to be an uphill climb. Um, what the challenge that I'm going to have is that when I'm walking into a room, and this has usually been the case, certainly business-wise, but politically, when I walk into a room, I have, I've always run as a Democrat, but I have never run saying vote for me because I'm a Democrat. I'm very libertarian, very business-oriented. Everything that I have been doing as mayor reflects my, my business background where we've reduced taxes, where we have adjusted our spending, where we've fixed pensions, where we've been able to come in and, and do some things. And all of this being said is if, if, if I walk into a room and there's going, there will be some segment that will say he doesn't have an R after his name, well, we're not going to listen to him. Um, but I think the vast majority of individuals, particularly for a governor or a governor's um, candidate, a gubernatorial candidate that they're going to they're going to listen more intently than if they would be saying well the a d or an r let me give you give you an example just the other day and and John Doyle you're not going to like what you're about to hear but i've got a contractor never that's doing lead some work with that <laughs> <laughs> never i have a i have a contractor that's doing some work at my house and he is a maga republican and when we came, when we first met with one another, I thought, oh boy, this this might be uh, difficult for both of us. <laughs> and we have just just connected in a way that nobody ever imagined. And he came to me the other day and said, uh, Steve, you still thinking of running for that thing? And I said, what thing? <laughs> said, Run, running for governor? And I said. Yeah, and he said, well, I had a buddy of mine the other day, and I was talking to him about you, and he said, y you know, Larry, you know that guy has a D after his name? And Larry said to him, he said, yeah, and he's more Republican than you are. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> the reality is, is that what I've found politically and in business, if folks will listen to me, usually I'll walk away with 90% of the room. The challenge is going to be, will I be able to get past that initial part where they're saying, uh, well, he's a Democrat, we, we'll, we'll just count him out. The one thing that I've learned throughout my life, people who count me out do it at their own peril. I've been underestimated my entire life, and I take on the challenge, and then I work that much, that much harder. What I've learned is the harder you work, the luckier that, that you become. Um, frankly, I think I'm the only Democrat that could probably pull this off. And uh, but I, I'm going to have if I don't if I'm not able to raise any money, then uh, I'm a uh, dead man walking. But if I'm able to get some resources behind me. We've got one heck of a story to tell about what we've been able to do in Huntington. And frankly, what Huntington has experienced is very similar to what most other cities in other counties around the state have had to, have had to experience. About the only area that hasn't had the problems that, that, that we've had, and we have some, is the area of the eastern panhandle. Kevin Knowles and I got to know each other dealing with the opioid epidemic and 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 some of the problems that we have there, but we've created innovative solutions here that other cities around the country are coming to us to see what what we can do. West Virginia can do the very same thing. And winding back around to what you were originally saying, how do I get past this in a red state? Is that uh, I've got to make sure that people 
start to realize this has this man has a message that's worth worth listening to. If they listen to me, I think I can walk away with a win. Now it's not going to be like most of my elections here have been sixty percent plus. This is going to be tight, tight as can be, um, and the, every one of the Republican candidates will be a whoever is nominated will be a strong candidate. But I also know how to be able to to speak to Republicans so that they can start to see that um, this man has uh, is fiscally conservative. Um, he's looking to do whatever he can from a uh, from a standpoint of independence and, and making sure that we're cre- giving individuals an opportunity to be able to stand on their own two feet. But there are some that need help. And I think we have to make sure that we are being compassionate. But the one thing that I have been pressing is that uh, we also need to hold people accountable as well. There are no free lunches, uh, but we need to be able to give individuals an opportunity to be able to stand on their own two feet. Steve, uh, remember I said don't lead with that. As it turns out, I do like the fact that you're able to get along with this MAGA Republican who's who's working on your house. Uh, there are quite a few MAGA Republicans around here that I get along with really well, and we can talk about issues without getting mad at each other. And you don't want to make an yeah. enemy of your contractor, Steve. I've learned that the hard <laughs> way. Well, that, yeah. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> uh, uh, isn't, what, isn't that the truth? But what I wanted to mention is that, that for both you and Ben Salengo, you were a mayor, he is a county commissioner. Uh, It is my belief, and and it goes way, way back, even before I was elected to the legislature first in 1982, is that West Virginia has been preoccupied with trying to solve all the problems at the state level. We don't (laughs) put enough trust or responsibility in local government. And I am hoping that, that whichever of the two of you is the Democratic nominee, will make the case that we need to have more confidence in the ability of local government to solve problems and thereby maybe change a few rules at the state level in different areas that permit local governments to deal with their own problems. Well, you know, John, when we were in the legislature, there was a group of Republicans. We had a supermajority of Democrats, but there was a group of Republicans that constantly said, uh, the government that governs best is the government that governs closest to the people. Let's find ways to be able to make sure that the decisions are being made locally. Uh, fact is, we don't like it when Washington comes in and they start placing uh, unfunded mandates on us at the state level or at the local level. Um, And frankly, cities don't like it when the legislature comes in and says, you shall do it this way. Well, what's right for Huntington is not necessarily right for uh, for Martinsburg or Wheeling or Bluefield. Um, What we what we have done in Huntington is is an example. I've eliminated the business and occupation tax on manufacturing. I eliminated the business occupation tax on retail and and on restaurants. I've spent about ten years trying to find a way to be able to do this. Well, what's interesting is that there were. uh, Mike, some of your colleagues up there said, "Well, Huntington can do it. Then we should do that all over the state." No. No, it, 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 only if it makes sense at that at, at that state. I hate B and O taxes. I would love to be able to get rid of them, but I also know that uh, we have to have a tax system in place where businesses can be assessed for the services that are being provided. But we also need to have the the, the capability of being able to make decisions as to what makes sense. Right here in Huntington, I've got Ohio right across the river. I've got Kentucky right down the river. There in Martinsburg, you've got, you're competing with Maryland and Virginia. Um, what is unique for the Panhandle, what's unique for Berkeley County, what's unique for Martinsburg, is not necessarily the very same thing for Jefferson County and for Shepherdstown. Steve, on that note, uh, i got to jump in here because we're up against a hard break here. I want to thank you so much for being on the program. Thanks for letting me be on, the, and I hope 
we have a chance to chat and to chat again. Absolutely. I'll take care. Love to have you back on again very soon. Thank you, Steve. Okay.